Hello everyone, welcome back to your YouTube channel and welcome to this amazing video today. And today I am presenting a numerical solution of an example where I am applying the equal area criterion to assess the rotor angle Trussian stability. In other words, I am using this equal area criteria to identify if the system that is subject to a disturbance is able to keep the synchronism. And today I am using a MATLAB life script because I want to focus more into the explanation of how to use this um, equal area criterion and I will be using here this MATLAB life script with the support of um, symbolic mathematics. And the use of symbolic mathematics will help me to solve the equations, the integral equations that I will create here. Well, without further detail, let me go for the explanation, okay? Let's start here and you can read a synchronous generator is connected to a infinity bus bar throughout a transmission line and you can see here the reactance is 0.15 per unit. The synchronous generator delivers active power P elect equal to 0.8 per, uh, per unit at power factor 0.8 and this is a lagging power factor and all those values are defined at the infinity boost bar when the voltage over there is 1.0 per unit. Now there is an interesting question here. Calculate the maximum magnitude of the mechanical power which can be suddenly increased without the generator losing the synchronism. In other words, we have here the single line diagram. In other words, I want to know what is the maximum increase in the mechanical power at the shaft that of this synchronous machine that I can apply without losing the synchronism. In this single line diagram, you can see the per unit values. All of them are defined on the same base. And you can see here, this is the D-axis Trussian reactance, 0.15 per unit. Transformer reactance, 0.20 and the transmission line reactance 0.15 per unit. As you can see, this is a lossless, lossless um, power system. I mean, there is no resistance here to dissipate any loss. And finally, you can see the um, value over here for the infinity bus voltage. And as you can see, it's 1.0 1, 1 0, uh, 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 0 degree. That means that this voltage is the reference and the internal voltage angle of this synchronous machine is delta. And that is the delta that we will be assessing in order to define the synchronism or the stability, rotor angle stability of this system. Let's start with the solution. Well, as usual, we have here clear bars in order to clear all the variables in the system. We have the input data, you can see here, infinite boost bar, one per unit, the D-axis uh, Trussian reactance, Trussian reactance, and that is uh, 0.15. You can see here the transformer reactance, 0 0.20, and you can see the transmission line reactance, um, 0 0.15. You, you can see also the electrical power that we are delivering to the uh, infinity bus bar, and that is uh, 0.8, and the power factor is 0.8, okay? Step number one. Step number one is very simple. What we need to do is uh, obtain or calculate the initial state of this system, and also to obtain the equivalent reactance that is defining the active power flow in this system. The system is extremely simple. As you can see here, I have the impedance, uh, sorry, the reactance diagram. And the reactance di diagram is extremely simple. Here on the left hand side, we have the most simple model for representing the synchronous machine. This is the classical model, also known uh, as the voltage behind the reactance. 
Then we have the transformer. Here, there is a representation of the series impedance and in reactance, sorry. And here we have the transmission line 0 0.15. And on the right hand side, we have the ideal voltage source representing the infinity boost bar. The impedance calculation here is extremely simple because all those impedance between the point G and the point infinity is basically a series connection. As a consequence, the total uh, reactance will be uh, 0 0.15 plus 0 0.20 plus 0 0.15, okay? This is a series connection. Then what we are doing here is defining the equation for the apparent power. The apparent power is delivered here at the infinity boost bar. For that reason, we can obtain the, the, the power, the apparent power, using a very simple representation, polar form, and the magnitude of the apparent power will be the active power divided by the power factor, and the angle of this apparent power will be the, the, the defined by the power factor, okay? When we put the number together, we have here the solution using um, rectangular form and polar form. If we go for the rectangular form, you can see that the apparent power is 0 0.8 plus J 0 0.6 per unit. And the polar representation, one angle at 36.86 per unit. Next step. Well, I need the current moving inside this circuit and using the definition of apparent power at the, at the infinity boost bar, I can extract the current and the current will be the apparent power divided by the voltage at the infinity boost bar, but the conjugate of all that. Applying the numbers, we have the numbers here, 0 0.8, Plus, uh, minus 0.6j. In polar four, probably is better, one at angle minus 36.86. Next set, and probably the final for calculating the initial conditions, uh, we use the Kirchhoff voltage law in order to obtain here the internal voltage of this generator. And it's very simple because applying Kirchhoff voltage law it will be the total equivalent reactance multiplied by the current plus the voltage on the infinity bus bar. When we put the number together, voila, we have that the internal voltage in polar form is 1.36 angle 17.1. And that is a very interesting result because as you can see, the magnitude of the internal voltage of the synchronous machine is larger than the infinity bus bar. I highly suggest the student to reflect about this and what is the consequence regarding active and reactive power. Step number two. Step number two in this problem is very simple. We obtain the maximum power, the maximum power that we can have in this electrical circuit. I mean the active power, maximum active power. And here all my students remember this equation over here. And this equation say that the maximum power transfer from the generator to the from the from the internal voltage source of the generator to the infinity boost bar is the internal voltage, the magnitude of the internal voltage multiplied by the magnitude of the infinity boost bar divided by the reactance. And that is the maximum power. When we put the number together, 1.36 multiplied by 1 divided by 0 0.5. Ba -bam, we have here the maximum power transfer between the internal voltage and the, um, and the infinity bus. And in this case, the value is 2.72 per unit, okay? Step number three. Now we are creating here, we are creating here the amazing power angle, the amazing power angle curve. And in this representation, I need to include the disturbance. And from that representation, I will obtain the areas A1 and A2 that I need to apply the equal area criterion. For that reason, let me show you. Initially, we are working here in this horizontal line, mechanical power zero. 
but suddenly somebody increased the power, the mechanical power on the shaft of this synchronous machine up to per mechanical one. That means that originally we are working on the point A, but suddenly somebody moved the mechanical power until B. For that reason, the machine must go from delta zero to delta C. However, however, in this case, as you must know, the area A1 here is representing the accelerating area. And in this accelerating area, the rotor of this synchronous machine stores so much kinetic energy and overshoot the point B. And in this case, it's reaching the point C that is defined by delta mats. That is the maximum oscillation point. And the area two, the area two represent the deaccelerating area where the rotor is releasing kinetic energy. And if we can identify the angle delta C that make A1 equal to A2, well, we have a stability. We have rotor angle transient stability. For that reason, now what we want to do is create the mathematical equation for A1, the mathematical equation for A2, and from those equations, I want to obtain delta C. And it's extremely simple. The area A1 is basically an integral from delta zero to delta C of the mechanical power minus the electrical power. But here there are two interesting things. The electrical power is defined by P mat uh, sine of delta, but the mechanical power, we want to express that in terms of the unknown variable delta C. And it's very simple to see, all my students can see that, that the mechanical power one is basically P mat multiplied by, uh, by sine of delta C. Well, now I am taking advantage of the symbolic mathematics inside MATLAB. And here we can see the accelerating area. The accelerating area is a very interesting equation that you can see combined cosine and sines, but also the angle. What I'm telling you is that this equation is 2.72 cos cosine of delta C plus 2.72 sine of delta C and sine is multiplying delta C minus 0 0.298 and finally minus 2.6 here on the right. Then we apply the decelerating area and the deaccelerating area is very simple. It's basically this area here between delta C and delta mats, on the top we have the electrical, the electrical power, and the bottom is defined by the mechanical power one. That is this equation over here. The area A2, it will be basically the integral between delta C and delta mats of P electric or electrical power minus mechanical power one. But we need to again remember that the mechanical power one can be referred, can be rewrite in terms of delta C. And that is what we are doing here. We are including here the mechanical power one as a function of the sine of delta C. But also we need to be careful because delta mats, delta mats, if you look over here, this angle delta mats, they are symmetrical. And you can see that delta mat will be pi minus delta C. And that is what I am writing here. Delta mat equal pi minus delta C. Now what I will do is again take the advantage of the symbolic mathematic in MATLAB. And now we have the deaccelerating area equal 5.44 cosine delta C plus 2.72 sine delta C that multiply to delta C minus 3.14. Now the time has arrived and now we need to apply the equal area criterion. And the equal area criterion say, if I can identify an angle delta C that satisfy that the area one is equal to the area two, I mean all the energy store is released all the all, all, all the the accelerating area is equal to the accelerating area well we will have a stability and this is what i am doing here i am creating a function eac 
that is basically equalizing A2 and A1, okay? And now what I want to do, what I want to do is basically, basically a plot, a plot of these functions, okay? As you can see here, I have a 2D plot. The horizontal axis is delta C and the vertical axis, we have two curves, one for representing A1 and A2. And as you can see, the, the blue and the orange curve, both of them, they intercept here around one. And that means that graphically, I can see that there is a point of intersection. That means that there is an angle where A1 is equal to A2. Now we are solving the equation. We are solving the equation using the symbolic mathematic. For that reason, we are using BPI solve from the 12 bots of symbolic mathematic. And voila, here we get the solution. The solution is that there is a delta C. I say from the plot that is around one, but the proper value is 0 0.9478 radians. Okay, that represents 40 uh, 44.30 degrees, okay? That means that we can find and we can identify this angle delta C here, and as a consequence, we reach a stability. This machine will be able to uh, absorb a delta power that is basically defined by mechanical power one, okay? Now the job is identifying the value of that mechanical power one. And as I say a couple of times before, the mechanical power one is equal to P mat sine of delta C. We know that delta C is 0 0.94 radians or 54.3 uh, degrees. And when we assess that, we obtain here that the final mechanical power will be 2.2093 per unit. And the increment, because we remember that the initial power was 0 0.8, and we increase the power until 2.0, um, 2.0, 2.20, okay? For that reason, the increment, the maximum increment in the mechanical power that we can use here is 1.4. Four zero, okay? Well, we solved this problem. We identified the maximum increment on mechanical power that we can apply here. However, this numerical example is very good for the students to learn the process of calculating the equal area criteria and ensuring uh, rotor angle transient stability. However, I would like my students to go beyond that. I mean, this is something basic. Everyone with just basic understanding can do this. Now, the, que the interesting question here at the very end of this problem, and what I suggest my student to do is, could you please change the initial state of the system? And when I say that, changing the initial state is basically changing this active power that is delivered to the, to the infinity bus bar. I highly suggest that you try with a lower active power, for instance, 0 0.2, and then try with a higher power like 0 0.95, and then conclude about the implication of changing the initial state on the maximum increment that we can apply on the mechanical shaft. I highly suggest to do that, okay? Well, this is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you want, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay in touch. Please leave a comment or send an email and I will be extremely happy to support you to help you. And this is all for this video and I will see you at the next time. I must say bye now.